إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد الحمد لله we are today, mashallah, on the 19th of Sha'ban, going into the 20th, as it is after Salat al-Maghrib. Uh, so 19th going into the 20th of Sha'ban, 1443, on a Wednesday, alhamdulillah. And today, mashallah, we are looking at the last portion in our book, the clarification of the methodology of Imam of the Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal in creed and propagation. Now in this portion, alhamdulillah, we're going to be going through our last parts. And this is the summing up of the Shaykh Mustafa Hamdu Ulayan. And he starts by saying, Al Khatima, quote, Al Khatima. The ending portion. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Praise be to Allah. With peace and blessings be upon the Messenger of Allah. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. And upon his family and companions and those also under his authority and judgment. Wa ba'ad. As for what comes next. Fa inna man karramati hadha al madhhabi al jaleel. Anu astamarra. عبر القرون دون انقطاع على الرغم من عدم الوجود دولة دولة ترعاه بخلاف المذاهب الأخرى والواقع التاريخي التاريخي والمشاهد يثبت أن فكر الإمام إن فكر الإمام أحمد وفقهه موجودان ومستمران في الأمة وأسانيد كتبه ومذهبه ومذهبه قد اتصلت بنا وبغيرنا في هذا العصر والحمد لله تعالى وما أرى ذلك إلا لحكمة ربانية عظيمة إذ إن بقاء جماعة الحنابلة في, في, في حواضر العالم الإسلامي في بغداد أولا ثم في, ثم في مصر والشام ثم في بلاد الحرمين فيه خير كبير للمسلمين يجعلهم الله منارات, منارات للعلم وذلك لتسيح مسار المسلمين ولإنكار الغلو في الفكر والسلوك it is from the wonders of this majestic and noble madhhab that it's continued on through the centuries without any stoppage, even though it didn't have the backing of any government or state, which is in contradiction to the other schools. And history stands as a sure witness, and it can be seen and established that the understanding of the Imam Ahmed, his fiqh, are both present and have stayed long standing in this ummah. The transmission of its books and its madhab has reached us and other than us in this noble time. Praise be to Allah, exalted be he. We don't see that as, as having come to pass except for a wisdom of the Lord that was great and weighty indeed. That being that the jama'ah of the Hanbalis remaining in the Islamic world in Baghdad firstly, and spreading to Egypt and Sham, then to the two haram sanctuaries of Mecca and Medina and the surrounding was a good and weighty benefit for the Muslims as Allah made them signposts of knowledge. And that is also to correct the affairs of the Muslims and to negate and repudiate any exaggeration in terms of creedal thinking as well as the methodology of carrying it out, also known as orthodoxy and orthopraxis. فينبغي على العلماء والدعاة والطلبات العلم أن يعملوا على واحدة أهل السنة أهل السنة والجماعة وزيادة الألف بين بين طوائفهم وجماعاتهم وطرقهم المتعددة فإن علماء الحنابلة يسعون إلى اتفاق والاتلاف مع طوائف أهل السنة It's necessary for the scholars, the callers and missionaries to the religion, students of knowledge 
that they act according to the best interests of the unity of Muslim orthodoxy, increasing love and communal friendship between the different groups and jamaas and the numerous pathways. As the scholars of the Hanbalis have constantly gone to agreement on principles and establishing themselves with the main bodies of groups from among Muslim orthodoxy. ومما يذكر أن أبا الحسن الحنبلي شيخ الحنابلة في عصره كان يقول لأصحابه تمسكوا بهذا الرجل يعني البقيلاني الأشعري فإنه إن ذهب فلن نجد في الإسلام مثله وفي جنازته مشى حافيا وقال هذا الذي رد على رافضة والخوارج والنصارى وظل يزور قبره كل يوم and of that which is mentioned that companionship and balance was the case of Abu al-Hasan al-Hanbali who was Sheikh of the Hanbalis in his time he said to his companions, Make sure to take knowledge from this man, meaning Abu Bakr al-Baqilani the Ash'ari. Indeed, he has gone, and we shall not find in Islam someone like him. And at the Janazah Salah of al-Baqilani, Abu Hassan Hanbali came barefooted and said, This is the one who rebuked the Rafidah, the Shia groups, the Khawarij, and the Christians. And he sat in the shade of the grave every day reflecting on that قال الشيخ الحنابلة في فلسطين العلامة عبد الله بن عودة صوفان القدومي رحمه الله the Sheikh of the Hanbalis in Palestine the senior scholar عبد الله بن عودة صوفان القدومي رحمه الله تعالى said in his book في كتابي المنهج الأحمن في در المثالب التي تمنى لمذهب الإمام أحمد in his book, The Right Way, in dispelling the disgraceful things which have been attributed to the method of the Imam Ahmed, he uttered the following, فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْفِرَقُ الثَّلَاثَ هُمْ مُعْبَرْ عَنْهُمْ أَهْلِ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ وَهُمْ أَهْلِ الظُّهُورِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْعَنْفِ فِي جَمِيعِ الْعَصَارِ وَالْأَمْصَارِ وَهُمْ الطَّائِفَ الْمَنْصُورَةِ وَهُمْ السَّوَادَ الْأَعْظَمِ وَأَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ وَالْأَشْعَرِيَّةِ وَالْمَاتُرِيدِيَّةِ فِرْقَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ مُتَفِقُونَ فِي أُصُولِ الدِّينِ عَلَى تَوْحِيدٍ وَتَقْتِيرُ الْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ وفي شروط النبوة والرسالة وفي موالات الصحابة كلهم وما جرى مجري ذلك كعدم وجود الصلاح والأصلح وأصلح وفي إثبات الكسب وإثبات الشفاعة وخروج عصاة الموحدين من النار والخلاف بينهم في في مسائل قليلة كتأويل آيات الصفات وأحاديثها هل هو جائزة أو ممتنع انتهى كلام العلامة القدوم الحنبلي so the Sheikh Abdullah Sufan al-Qudumi, rahimahullah, who died 1331, he lived from 1246 to 1331, rahimahullah, he said, Indeed, these three groups fall under the rubric of Muslim orthodoxy, and they have been dominant and manifest in all times and in all places, and they are the assisted body, the assisted group, the victorious group, and they are the vast majority. They are the people of Hadith, the Ash'aris, the Maturidis. They are but one group in reality. They are agreed in the foundational principles on Tawheed, the doctrine of destiny and predestination regarding evil and good, the conditions of prophethood and messengership, and love and mutual understanding of the grandeur of the companions. And that which is agreed upon amongst them on the topic of what Allah exalted rewards the basis of salvation, the acquiring of deeds, establishment and affirmation of intercession, that the sinful amongst those who affirm the oneness of Allah shall exit from the fire. The difference of opinion among these three groups within Muslim orthodoxy are in a few issues. Like, for example, the interpreting of the ayat of the attributes, the ahadith of the attributes as well, whether it's permitted or impermissible. And then this concludes the statement of the Shaykh Abdullah Sufan al Qudumi, rahimahullah. وقد أثبت القدومي اجتماع أهل السنة في مسائل الأصول والاختلاف في مسائل قليلة قليلة فقط. وهذا ما أثبته كذلك الحنابلة ومنهم العلامة السفاريني والعلامة عبد الباقي المواهبي. والعلامة حسن الشطي والعلامة ابن سلوم والشيخ عبد الله خلف الدحيان 
Sheikh Al Hanabila bin Kuwait, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala. So that which is, was affirmed by Sheikh Abdullah Sufan al Qadumi, Rahimahullah, is the gathering of Muslim, Muslim Orthodoxy upon the principles and affairs in foundational religion. The difference of opinion amongst them is only in a few areas. This has also been affirmed by Hanbalis such as Imam Muhammad Ahmed al-Safarini, who died 1189, the senior scholar Abdul Baqi Muwahhabi, the senior scholar Hassan al shalti who died 1274 Hijri, the senior scholar Ibn Saloum, and the Sheikh Abdullah Khalaf al who died 1349, the Sheikh of the Hanbalis in Kuwait. May Allah have mercy upon all of them. وَلَا يَجُوزُ النَّسْعَى لِلْفُرْقَةِ وَالْخِلَافِ لِيَنَّ الْحَلَابِلَةِ فِي أُصُولِ الْفِقْهِ مُتَّفَقُونَ عَلْ مَعَ جَمْهُورِ الْفُقَهَا يعني الشافعية والمالكية إلا في مسائل قليلة وفي أصول الدين متفقون مع جمهور متكلم أهل السنة الأشاعرة والماتريدية يعني إلا في مسائل والخلاف فيها فرعي كما يعرف ذلك من كتب الأصلين المطولة It is not permitted that we rush to sectarianism and dispute as the Hanbalis in Usul al-Fiqh are in agreement with the vast majority of fiqh scholars, meaning the Shafi'is and Malikis, except in a few branch issues. They're in agreement with the majority regarding the foundations of the religion. Even the theologians that engage in speculative theology, like the Ashuris and Maturidis, except in a few areas. The dispute between them is in branch areas, just as that can be known from the books that discuss Usul al-Din and Usul al-Fiqh. قال علي الخواص رحمه الله علي الخواص has uttered لا يقوم الدين إلا باتفاق عليه لا ب... لا... لا بالاختلاف فيه ثم لا يصح للعلماء اتفاق إلا إذا خرجوا عن رق الشهوات النفسانية وما لم يخرجوا فلا يصح لهم ارتباط ارتب... قلوبهم مع بعضهم أبدا The religion cannot be established except by agreement upon it can't be established by disputation in the affair. It is not valid for the scholars to come to an agreement except when they have left from low and base selfish desires. As long as they have not done that, it will never be valid for their hearts to be gathered together one upon another. What <laughs> Imam Ahmed fi Zuhud? And Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah, has said in the book as Zuhud, Sufha Sabawamiya, page 107, An Sayyidan Limami Ali bin Abi Talib in Karram Allahu Wajha, V Sifatul Ulama al Arifina and Nahuqal, in which he narrated from our noble Sayyid, the Imam Ali bin Abi Talib, may Allah noble his face, in the description of the scholars who are knowers of Allah, in which he said, Ta'alam al Ilm, Mutarrafu bih, Wa'amalu bih, Takunu min Ahli. فإنه سيأتي من بعدكم زمان ينكر الحق ينكر الحق فيه تسع عشر ولا ينجو فيه إلا كل نؤمة ولئك أمة الهدى ومصابيح العلم. Learn knowledge, become familiar with it, act by it, so that you might be from those qualified to carry it. There shall come a time after you in which the truth shall be negated. Nine tenths of it. No one will be safe except for each group that has come together and established himself upon it. These are the Imams of Guidance and the Lamps of Knowledge. In closing, I, Mustafa Hamdu Ulayan, would like to say, أَسَلَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى الْقَاهِرْ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ أَنْ يَجْمَعَ شَمَلَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I would like to ask Allah exalted be He, the one who is dominant over His slaves, that He gather together the affairs of the Muslims on our broad principles. وَيُوَحَّدَ كَلِمَتَهُمْ and that he unify their position and word. And that he caused the students of knowledge to benefit with this small text and research on the methodology of the Imam Ahmed and the Hanbalis. And that the affairs although they became much regarding disputation and difference of opinion that these be lessened so that we can gather upon the truth of the affair so as not to be 
disunited in the, in the affairs that are most important to us and that we are to be gathered upon in the end. وقد قال الإمام أحمد رحمه الله رحم الله عبدا قال بالحق واتبع الأثر وتمسك بالسنة واقتدى بالصالحين وبالله التوفيق. As the Imam Ahmed Muhammad said, may Allah have mercy upon the slave who spoke with the truth, followed the narratives, took hold of the Sunnah, and made sure to follow the pious people, and indeed in Allah's all success. Walhamdulillahi alladhi bi ni'matihi tatammu salihat So I'd like to say in the end as the author, praise be to Allah who with his favor made us carry through righteous deeds. Ketabu khadim al-madhab al-hanbali as written by the servant to the Hanbali Madhab, a doctor, the doctor, Mustafa Hamdu Ulayan. And, close quote. And this is uh, by this sheikh who is um, chief researcher, uh, detailed researcher in the Hanbali Madhab, Imam and Khatib in Jordan, and carrier of uh, a high ijaza in the revealed law, as well as five qira'at, out of the 14 with specialization in Hanbali Madhab with the transmissions connected through uh, transmission and teaching. So this is the end of this book. The clarification of the methodology of the Imam Ahmed Hanbal in Creed and Propagation. The Imam left us with, the Imams in the text quoted left us with a wide body of information to reflect upon. And the Sheikh Mustafa Hamdu Ulayan did a great job in collecting all of this together. In closing this off, I'd like to say that there are five things that we can take away. Before I go into that, I want to mention this kitab, based upon the principles given, makes it possible that Muslims, wherever they are, can set up a community. They can start by buying some land, Establishing a community first. Once they've established their community, they will have their tradesmen. They will have their other affairs. Then after that, they will establish their masjid once the adults become sufficiently knowledgeable. And if they build it using the methodology of that kitab, you won't fall into the Ashari Sufi Maturidi versus Salafi Wahhabi thing. You won't fall into the Diobandi Brawi thing because none of that stuff will be there. None of those things will appear. If you do do the Mawlid celebration, it will be very muted. If you follow this advice, you won't go astray. There will be difference of opinion there, but it will be muted and it will be conditioned upon evidences and texts. This is the reality. The five things I would like to advise is, number one, based upon what the author brought together from the Moraji and such, avoid disputation. You will have found by looking at this, some people have been disputing for years and years and years engaged in debate and argumentation. Let me say this, in five years, what you could have done is in five years you could have memorized the Qur'an in totality. Qur'an is 8,640 lines, 6,236 ayat. If you did eight lines a day, five days a week, two days for review, you'd memorize the Qur'an in five years. But instead of doing that, you engaged in debate and discussion argument. In five years you could have also finished the memorization of Lumat al You could have finished that in a year. In a year out of those five years, you could have memorized Imam Tahawi's text. In a year out of those five years, you could have memorized a fiqh text. In two years out of that five, you could have memorized an intermediate fiqh text. In, five year, in two years out of that five years, you could have memorized a metan and tajweed. In two years out of that five years, you could have memorized a book on Arabic language, whether it's the Ajrumiya or the Shanqiti or the others. In two years out of that five years, you could have memorized a book on Usul Fiqh. But you didn't. And that brings us to our second point. If you realize that you wasted that five years, repent now, 
Stop doing it. Make Toba immediately avoid all of that. Cut off any links to that world today and start fresh. If you are engaging in doing it right now, stop doing it immediately. Cut it off and stop doing it because that's the only option that you have. Because you've wasted too much time already. MashaAllah, if you've not wasted five years plus, alhamdulillah, that's good. There's hope. Five years plus, it will be harder to go against it because you've built, your heart has had entered into it, these things, and it's pushed the knowledge and the barakah out. It will be harder for you to go against it. But if you've been engaging in it and not wasting five years plus, you have a better option of recovering and not relapsing. Number three, attempt to be around people that will guide you and assist you to take from the rightly guided authorities of this ummah, namely the murajir, as we discussed, and every madhab has its authorities in murajir. Stick to that. And try to establish that. Stop disputing and debating and arguing. It's a waste of time. Most of your social media should probably be deleted. Most of it. Number four, you should have a portion of your day that's dedicated to learning and reading. If you can't read omnivorously, then you will be destroyed and you'll fall back in relapse, just like drug addicts relapse on heroin or cocaine. You'll fall in because that's also a drug that debating you get a little rush and there's the endorphins and everything. You will fall back into that and you will lose another five years. And by the time you get to the end of your life, you realize that you wasted all this time and that your life was worth nothing. And you may have even nullified your deeds by slandering people, making tech fear and touch team and touch charges. You got nothing from it only to come on the day of resurrection and find your accounts empty because of all this fighting. Stop debating. Number five, when you take knowledge, make sure that the people that you're taking knowledge from, they're going to go through a book with you from cover to cover. The reason why these disputing people fall into the fitin that they fall into is because they don't go through any, any kutub, any mutun. They don't do it. That's why they're in the condition that they're in. And you'll find five years, 10 years down the line, they haven't done anything because the sources they're taking from aren't capable of taking them through any kutub. Stop disputing. Stop debating. There's no ilm in it. So you'll need to be around good company where you don't do this. Where the knowledge is clear and it's there. You take from one another. You learn from one another. In addition to scholars, do so in person. Online is not going to be the same because online is a place of disputation and whipping chains and snakes and vipers that lay in the dirt and look to strike. No, you won't get any real knowledge there. You have to meet someone in person. You'll have to do it in person. You have to learn ilm in person. You have to do so in person to establish these things in person so that links can be made in person. So the transmission of knowledge can be done in person so that the question and answers can be done in person. And so that the people in question can assess you and see your growth in person. If you don't do this, you can't benefit anything. You will not benefit and you'll be destroyed in the end because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wrath will be sent down uh, on, on these types of things because his line is sent down on those people that are engaged in disputation and battling and debating with people and arguing. And it's sure to strike you. It won't miss you. It will hit you. So use this time wisely to avoid these types of things. Cut off all these people that are engaged in debating and arguing and fighting. Cut them off. If you have that means you have to delete your social media, then delete it. If that means you have to cut people off, cut them off. You will never, ever benefit or learn or memorize anything as long as you're doing this. So that's the gist of what I would say, alhamdulillah. And in closing down these five points, I wanted to thank those who had been patient with us uh, listening from beginning to end all of these um, uploads of our presentations and in addition to listening from beginning to end they also looked in the uh, comments box or the address box to actually go through the recommended articles that helped buttress and explain this because that will help give light to and put meat on the bone from what the Marja people and Sheikh Mustafa Hamdur Alayan 
um, Alhamdulillah has laid out. So you look at those things, you look at what's in the address bar, you reflect on what's in those articles because it just stops a lot of disputation and it also answers questions in a forthright and systematic way. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes us among those who follow the first three generations and their rightly guided successors after up until our time. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik innahu ghafurur rahim hamid rahim wa la ilaha illa Allah wassalamu alaykum